Hello everyone and welcome back to your favorite internet show of this channel, the Skybox series. In today's video we will going to create a Skybox shader in Godot using Visual Shader. This video will be the basic one similar to the one I have done for Unity. And I know that I have said that I won't recreate existing videos in Godot but I need to show the basics so we can possibly continue the series in the future using Godot. Alright for the tutorial I will be using Godot 4.2 and I have also installed the add-on called Shaderlib. Add-on is not necessary for this tutorial but I mean it's good to have for more complex videos like if you want to recreate the Unity tutorials then you pretty much need the add-on. Lastly I have hit 1000 subscribers. Thank you so much. Apparently I also need watch hours to apply for partner program. So I request you to watch entire video without skipping. It will really help. Okay, enough of that. Let's get to the topic right after the intro. Alright, I have a blank scene with Node 3D as main parent here. And now first let's create a visual shader. Right click, create new resource, search for visual shader. Then select the mode sky. I will call it skybox shader. Let's also create a material for our shader. Right click, create new resource, search for shader material. I will call it skybox with the extension dot material. Assign our shader to the material. Pretty cool. Now the question is where do we apply the material? You need to click these three little dots here. Here you can adjust the sky color, the sun size and all the good stuff. We don't care about all this because we will create our own. So just go ahead and click this add environment to scene button. Then we will have this world environment node. It is necessary because without this our skybox will not render when we run our game. In the inspector click the environment resource and in it expand the sky section click on the sky resource here you can see the sky material slot just drag and drop our material here now in the shader first we need access information of our world in the unity video we have grabbed that by normalizing the position node value in world space in Godot we have a nice variable called i direction although it is called i direction all it does is it gives the access information in world space and we cannot see the preview here because Godot does not currently support 3D previews I guess. Now we need the up axis and for that let's click this tiny arrow here. It will give us red, green and blue values or we can also say x, y and z respectively. Now we cannot see the preview of y axis either but for the educational purpose I will feed it into the color. So in Y axis we will have value of 1 at the top then it will slowly fade to 0 at the horizon and then it will fade to minus 1 at the bottom. First we will only need the values between 1 and 0. Now if you have watched the unity video there we have used clamp node to clamp the values between 1 and 0. For this one let's use max node just to show the alternatives. Max node as the name suggests returns the maximum value between these two inputs. So for the value bigger than 0 we will get that value itself and between 0 and negative values 0 is bigger so we will get 0. So now we have 1 to 0 in the sky and the rest is all 0. Ok now we need values between 0 and minus 1 and for that we will use you guessed it, min node. Min node returns the minimum values between the two inputs. Feed our y axis into A and for B set 0. Now we have 0 at the top and from horizon to bottom we have negative values. We can't use negative values, we need to change them to positive values. In unity tutorial I have used the negate node to do that. For this one, let's use absolute node. Again, this is to show that there are million ways to get the desired result. 
you don't need to blindly follow me. Just try to understand why we are using each node, do that and you will never find yourself stuck in tutorial hell. Anyway, I just realized I haven't explained what absolute node does. Absolute node will simply return positive value or absolute value or unsigned value. So we have all zero at top, from horizon to bottom, the value will slowly fade from zero to one. Let's add these two together. Now we have one at top, zero at horizon, and again one at bottom. But we want opposite of that, we want zero instead of one and vice versa. In simple words, I want to invert the colors. For that, let's use one minus node. One minus will subtract whatever values we feed in from one. So in this case, it will invert the color. Pretty cool. Now the max node will be our sky part, our absolute node will be our ground part and one minus node will be our horizon. Now we need to control the size of the horizon, so let's create a power node. Power node will darken the values which are less than one as we increase the power. And now I think we can go full screen with our shader. Alright, we will do the same for our sky part and our ground part. So let's create two power nodes. And to control the power from the inspector, let's create three float parameters. I will call them Zenith, Horizon and Nadir Blend respectively and feed them in power nodes. Now let's create three color parameters for our sky, horizon and ground color. Then let's multiply our sky color with our sky power node. Then we will do the same for our horizon and ground. Finally, let's add everything together. Then take our final add nodes output and feed it into the color. And our basic skybox shader is done. It will look like this. And we have our nice skybox. Now just to give you guys ideas and justify the thumbnail, let's add some clouds. For that, we will use simple noise node. This is the node from the add-on, but you can also use Texture2D with Noise Texture. No big deal. We will multiply our noise with our sky part. Then add it to our sky. Finally, add this one here. And you will see everything turns black because we have a compilation error. The reason is the simple noise uses default UVs and in our sky processor we don't have access to UV variable. If I hit the show code button you can see it says unknown identifier in expression UV. It's alright default UV won't help us here anyway. So we will say that we want to apply the simple noise parallel to our x, z plane. To do that we will simply use x and z axis of our world or i direction and combine them using vector to compose node. Then take its output and feed it into simple noise nodes UVs. Now we have the weird stretching going on at the horizon. The reason is because our skybox is basically a sphere and the noise is trying to wrap around the top. To fix this, we will simply divide our new vector with our y axis. Then take its output and feed it into the UV. Now our noise is applied perfectly parallel to our xz plane. Finally, let's move the clouds. For that, let's create a time node. 
then create multiply node for vector 2. Take our time and feed it into multiply node. Now to control the speed and direction, you can of course use vector2 parameter node. I will just pass the values in multiply node itself. Then to offset the values, we will use uv function node with mode panning. It will simply pan the uvs using the offset. Take our multiply nodes output and feed it into offset. Take our divide nodes output and feed it into uv. Finally, take our uv function nodes output and feed it into simple noise nodes uv. And we have our moving clouds. Of course, this needs the improvement, but I will leave that to you. And if you're creating a game like DCS, then you will need a different approach, maybe volumetric clouds with ray marching. But for this tutorial, I think you guys will get the idea. Now you can hopefully recreate the effects from the previous episode in Godot as well. Take it as a challenge and give it a shot. And that's pretty much the video. If you find the video helpful, consider like, share and subscribe. Wishlist Cosmic Roads on Steam. If you have any questions, post them in the comments. That's it from me and I will see you guys in the next one.